Hello friends, how are you doing today? So one of our AAC family members, Naresh Kumar, asked about um, uh, how a network engineer or network admin can become network solution architect. Okay. So for this, um, I'm going to invite my uh, one of the best friends, uh, Pradeep. He has um, very good knowledge about uh, network and network solution architect roles. So let's go and uh, welcome Pradeep and talk about this topic. Hi, Pradeep. Hey, hi, Govan. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Okay. So um, in our channel, we um, got a question from one of our um, YouTube ch channel family member. He was asking about like um, how I can become a network solution architect um, when I perform the role of like network engineer or network admin, so and so. So what is your thought uh, based on your experience? Right. Yeah. Uh, so what we could do is, I mean, uh, basically for anybody who want to start their career in networking, right? So there are two ways they can start their career. One, somebody, people who are like eagerly want to uh, get a job, right? Initially. So they can start with like an uh, initial stuff. They can start with DevNet or like something, le learning some Python programming or like cloud automation and all these things. So because these are really hot cakes today in the industry so they can start with those get a job but from a long-term experience perspective definitely they need to go through fundamentals right networking fundamentals so that okay. that where things help them really tune their career for a longer period but mm -hmm. people who are looking immediate to get jobs they can as i said they can start immediately with python or like uh, cloud automation or any of the automation courses that can help like pick their careers immediately okay nice so what are all the roles available in the network area? Because uh, if I came from the development area and also like I, I became an architect from the development background. But uh, right. similar to that, um, what are all the basic roles available in network field and uh, how those uh, roles can perform the network architect uh, roles and responsibilities, uh, how they can do it? Uh, uh, let's go one by one. Let's understand like what are all the basic roles available in uh, network area. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, networking is a huge, huge topic. Like it's it's vast, right? So networking, security go hand in hand most of the time. So there are people who become security architects, right? And people who become network architects. So we can talk both. How can they can split their career uh, along these both paths? Like they can become solution architects on either side, right? Okay. So when it comes to net network architects so, or a security architect, initially, as I said, they need to start with networking fundamental, right? As a network engineer job. So what gets them a network engineer job, like as I said, fundamentals, uh, the good place for them to start would be like a CCNA, like a Cisco certified associate, right? So that's a basic start where they learn the fundamentals initially of a networking, right? That's where they kickstart their career with networking, get a job, become a network engineer. Then eventually they can go, I mean, once they're in the fundamentals, they can split towards like either they want to go in security or network engineer, right? So let's take the path of like networking. Okay. So once they start CCNA or like learn the fundamentals, then over a period of time, they acquire the knowledge, like fundamental knowledge, right? So then they can do the next level of certifications if they're interested, like CIS, I mean, professional level of certifications, right? I'm taking Cisco as a baseline, but there are a lot of other vendors they can do certifications with like Juniper, they have like similar certification path. So associate, professional and expert level certifications, right? Okay. So once they go into professional level, like they get more advanced skills, little more, right? And beyond that, though, before they become a solution architect or expert, they can write like an expert level certification within their domains, right? Cisco certified expert, CCIEs they go. So those jobs are highly valued jobs. Like a lot of companies prefer CCIEs and like all these people, like when they come into design or like a, a solution architect level roles, right? Okay. So within that certification, they have a design expert certification level. Like, uh, so people can choose, as I said, like there are way too many paths for them to take or to reach that goal, um, depending on where their interest is, how they want to become a solution architect. But to start with, these would be the three stages they can cross to become an architect level like role. Okay. That's, that's a good explanation, like how they can uh, start the um, career towards the network solution architect. Thank you for that. And... Um, uh, what are all the major uh, responsibilities of a network architect when they become a network architect? Because um, completing the certification is one side, but uh, what would be the real-time um, 
experience experience that our person should have to become a network solution architect sure yeah so to become an architect basically as i said like well, so every company comes with like example we can pick and project right they comes with a project but the first thing they call is like hey we want to bring infrastructure guys like understand what does it take to build certain project or an application like anything it can be an sap it can be a like feature access oracle product anything right so what they do is like from an architect perspective you really need to understand hey how how can i accommodate this project into my on prem data center or in cloud data center like where can i place it what makes the best optimal path for that application right when somebody is trying to access right so we need to consider too many parameters like hey what would be the my latency between the end users who are trying to access that application right how fast they can access this right then based on that they need to really think on designing like where do i keep it how do i size it like is there a future growth for this application right mm-hmm. then you need to really size the, uh, your network accordingly to that application then the application comes into picture like then they'll be sizing it accordingly how they want to keep that so from an architect level role as i said like you need to really scope out what's the requirement based on any project right so what's your current environment how does it look like and how can you fit this project or like product into your environment right mm-hmm. sizing and everything like ip addressing it can be anything ip addressing routing that helps that application to really accessible to everybody in the company oh that's good good to know basically you are saying that uh, the person who are who is willing to proceed with the network solution architect role must have all these uh, um, experience right a real time experience right. of uh, sizing and also latency related ip related and right. when it comes no. to the uh, infrastructure setup he must be into the on premises uh, uh, environment where he can uh, set up the infrastructure for the application right. development team and uh, what what would be the uh, the the difference you think of uh, when it comes to the on premises uh, network solution architect um, and also when it comes to the cloud uh, network solution architect what, what what is the difference between these two roles and uh, your, your thought on that good question right so on prem all this the traditional networking or like people who are uh, build the data centers like on prem you're talking right so people are going to the cloud because of the scalability and like cost and all these things which when it comes to cloud so most of the cloud stuff like our cloud networking what we call it as like it's um your fundamentals are same like across like anywhere you go your networking is the same concept right so above it like there is an overlay how they build the network has changed or the i mean the, this cloud completely it has changed plus automation which came in like that's where the cloud is way advanced compared to your on on prem i mean it's not like you can't do an on prem but people who are like doing automations even on the on prem right but yeah. cloud is purely getting built on automation how fastly can i build a network right to an automation so when it becomes a cloud network engineer or a cloud solution architect right they really need to scale their skill sets around like automation programming python like understanding trying how can i simplify a daily network engineer operations job right i want to spin up a network i want to spin up like an environment like how quickly can we do it? that's in the cloud right okay when it comes to on prem like so latency as i said if you're trying to understand where do i place my pro- product right how do i make a decision if you ask me right you need to really understand where is my end users first right who are trying to consume this application right so what is the closest easiest and fastest way to get to that application right if your users are spread across over the internet cloud would probably make sense because cloud is connected to internet so that it, it makes them fast to reach like through the internet to reach their resources right so when do i keep it an on prem like when all your users let's say are within the four walls within the office right so mm-hmm. there is nobody that trying to access your application from outside internet your majority of users are within your building or within your private network right right then on prem would make sense at that point like keeping or hosting your application with an on prem then you can design accordingly how can i really optimize this right okay so basically when it comes to this um, on premises we are just working on the closed private network and um, the right. responsibilities of the cloud um, network solution architect would be limited to that uh, private uh, network and uh, when it comes to the cloud he should learn 
more about um, other uh, scalability features that uh, the third party cloud service provider provides right let's right. have some knowledge about uh, their um, their tools and technologies that uh, the cloud services provides right sure. that's exactly right like yes amazon or uh, microsoft azure aws gcp anything mm-hmm. so underneath your fundamentals are same but how they implement that has changed so they have their own tools or uh, sets that help you to build those networks. So you just need to learn those things, how you can like u- utilize those tool sets to build the network. When it comes to on-prem, because it's on-prem, you already know you you guys would have built your on-prem stuff. Like right. th- that's it, that's what it makes sense. Like so, that's how you decide where you keep your application. Okay. All right. So you mentioned about a couple of certifications, right? Uh, I don't remember it, but I'll put it in the description below when I submit this video. But those certifications um, are sufficient for a person to become a a network solution architect or on top of that certificate, he should uh, go for any cloud service provider certifications too. So Cisco recently advanced their certification. They refreshed their whole like um, agenda within the certifications, right? Previously, there was not too much of automation in those certifications. Because the world is changing so fast, they accommodated automation within their certifications recently, right? But once they become, like as I said, the CCIE level of certifications, it's highly valued across cloud engineers or an on-prem engineers. It doesn't matter. Like so, it's a highly valued certification across the industry and the networking. So once they reach that level of certifications, it's pretty good for them, or like they can really become a solution level architect. So. But to even to do that certifications, I believe you need a minimum working experience. They recommend it's not like you can't do without an experience, but they would recommend having a real time experience before you write an expert level certifications. Okay, uh, that's how you become like solution expert. Those are one of it. Like uh, Cisco is one example as I give you, but Juniper has their own expert level of certifications. So they can even study those within like underneath. As I said, fundamentals are same across all the networking skill sets. Okay. So you, finally, you're saying that those certifications related to the network is, uh, is totally sufficient yeah. or uh, the person should go for any uh, cloud service provider certification. It's additional thing or it's uh, necessary to go for uh, uh, cloud service provider certifications. It's not must, I would say, okay. but cloud certifications will help their career basically to advance. Like, I mean, they'll have more opportunities, I would say, like, because I worked on certification like GCP level. So people would understand, oh, networking wise, you are, people know what you do, right? Like they understand the your certification piece, but how do I implement in GCP is a different scale because the GCP has their own tool set. So once you write their certifications, basically they understand, oh, so this person, so-and-so person knows the GCP, how to do it within GCP. The okay. same network process, but they know in the GCP how to do it. So that's how the GCP or an AWS or an Azure certification help them, like basically to understand that concepts. Uh, it can be done different, right? Like any project or any solution can be done in ten different ways. That's the only thing difference I would suggest on that one. Oh, okay, nice, thanks. Um, I hope I think we covered everything uh, based on the question asked by the person. Um, so, what are your uh, three or four bullet points uh, for a person to become a um, network solution architect so that we can just uh, be clear on focused on those uh, areas. Sure. So once they do their fu- uh, fundamentals, like as I said, even once you finish your like certification doesn't mean that's a stop for your professional growth. They got to still keep uh, learning new skill sets, right? Like the whole automation come into picture these days. So they need to learn Python, like on like any other scripting tools that will help their daily operation jobs much, much easier, right? So they have to keep uh, educating themselves or like learning more and new stuff, new technology. So how can they improvise on top of their existing skill set? So those are the stuff like I, I would suggest or recommend for people who are really looking for career in that. So always keep reading and like, do something different like or read something different like see how you can bring those new ideas into your existing environment okay thank you so much pradeep uh, it was very nice talking to you yeah, and you. Uh, we'll connect with another interesting topic soon sure go ahead. thank you thanks for the opportunity see you bye so i have provided all the details and links in the description below and hope you will like this video if you like this video give a thumbs up 
and uh, don't forget to subscribe this channel take care bye